Okay, here we're going to talk about buckling. Uh, so buckling occurs in columns, and by columns we mean a long, slender member that's uh, under compression. And buckling is basically the lateral deflection of the column. So if there's a critical load pushing down, okay, it'll kick out um, and, and buckle on itself. Okay, uh, and so that critical load is defined as the maximum load. Uh, that puts the column on the verge of buckling. So any small lateral force uh, will basically pop out that um, column laterally, and it'll remain deflected. Okay. If the critical load, if the load is below the critical load, then the the column will be able to snap back to the way it was after the lateral force has been put on it. Okay. So. Um, we're going to take a look at this. So we're going to determine the moment in the column. So I've got uh, the axial force down that kicks things out, basically shifts over some arbitrary distance v at some distance x. Okay, and then I've got p back up. But that creates a small moment. That internal moment would be m, which is equal to basically negative uh, p v, which is the you know kind of that deflection at that at that point. Okay, so I'm going to set that using what I know about the relationship between the moment and the deflection given by that. So rearranging that equation a little bit, we get an equation like this, which is a differential equation. Okay, and the solution for this sort of a differential equation takes the form uh, given here. Okay, so now we need to find those two constants in order to finish solving this differential equation to figure out you know what that critical load actually is. So uh, I start doing some boundary conditions where the deflection when x equals 0 is 0 because it's pinned up at the top, can't deflect at all. Okay, When I do that, I find that C2 equals 0 because the sine of 0 is 0. That goes away. So C2 has to equal 0. I do the same thing at x equals L where it's also pinned, so the deflection is 0 there. Okay, So now I get C1 sine of this times L. Now, C1 could be 0, but that's trivial. Okay. To get that sine equal to zero, it follows this sort of a, an approach like this. Uh, because it's a, a cyclical function, we get something like this. So the critical load would be where n equals 1. Okay, So plugging in n equals 1 and plugging in uh, and solving for p, I find the critical load equal to this equation right here. So this, again, is the load on the verge of buckling for a column that I have. Now notice that this is independent of the material strength. It's only dependent on the geometry and the uh, modulus of elasticity of the material. Also keep in mind that the critical load is going to buckle about the weakest axis, right? Um, you know, we can have two different axes, okay? But critical load, that's the lowest force at which it's about to buckle. Okay, I need the lowest moment of inertia to do that. So it's always going to buckle about that weakest axis. Okay. Now, rearranging things a little bit, you'll remember from our discussion in statics about the radius of gyration, where the moment of inertia is the area times r squared, where r is the radius of gyration. I can take that, plug it into this equation, I can get things in terms of the um, critical stress. Okay, and We use this critical stress just to make sure that we're not uh, causing uh, any sort of um, stress on this as well. Okay. Uh, basically, we solve to make figure out when it's buckling and then make sure that it didn't fail under stress uh, before that. And that stress is basically equal to this, which is uh, a function of what we call the slender rate, slenderness ratio, which is the length of the column divided by that radius gyration. Okay. So the bigger that ratio is, the longer and skinnier uh, the column might be. Okay. But the main equation here is the critical load equation up at the top. And again, this is for a pinned-pinned connection. Now. We can look at it with various other supports. We're going to do one example of a fixed free here. So again, it's fixed at the base, it's free at the top. I've got a load acting on it. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to find the moment, set it equal to the second derivative of the deflection. But recognize now that the since it's free to move at the top, that can move some amount delta. Okay, and then my arbitrary distance. V here. So again, now it's P delta minus V. So my differential equation looks a little bit different. It's not equal to zero. It's equal to this constant here, P uh, EI times delta. OK, 
Okay, so my solution looks a little different. I have this plus delta at the end that I need to worry about. Okay, but I'm going to plug in uh, some boundary conditions again. B equals zero to x equals zero. That makes um, the C1 term go to zero. Okay, that means C2 equals negative delta. Okay, I also know that the slope when x equals zero down at the base has to be zero because it's fixed there. Okay, so when I do that, plugging in x, uh, the derivative of these things, right? So sine goes to cosine, cosine goes to sine, so then sine of zero goes to zero. Okay, this delta goes away in the derivative, so then c1 has to equal zero uh, in that case. Now, the last thing I know is that the flexion equals delta up at the top here by the definition that I've had, which leaves me with the equation delta cosine uh, given here. So similarly as last time, I can solve this when cosine equals zero using that. Okay, rearranging this, plugging in n equals one, rearranging it, solving for p critical, you notice that I get uh, p critical. I have this factor of four down below. Okay, so what we actually do is we use what's called an effective link factor. Okay, where p critical is everything's the same. It's just I have some factor k times the length. Okay, so for a pin pin, that k is 1, and I just have L squared. For fixed free, like I just solved here, I have um, L equals 2. And you can see it's basically like a half of a sine wave that I'm looking at, half of a sine wave. We can look at two other ones. We've got two fixed ends, a fixed and a pinned end, and you've got a k of 0.5 and a k of 0.7 here. Again, whole idea is finding that length at which the you've got that kind of half of a sine wave here, okay? So using though, you know, based on those supports, uh, using that effective link factor, I can calculate the critical load, the critical stress uh, of a column.